Hello and welcome to TVB News. A British man who was charged with assisting Hong Kong authorities with gathering intelligence in the UK was found dead in a park near London on Sunday. Earlier, he reportedly attempted to commit suicide after charges were filed against him. The Hong Kong SAR government refused to comment on the matter. In Beijing, the foreign ministry said China is firmly against the UK's malicious smears. Mimo Singai reports. Matthew Trickett was found dead in this park in Maidenhead, west of London, on Sunday. Police cornered off the area where the body was discovered. A black forensics tent was set up in the area. British police said they received a report at 5.15 p.m. on Sunday, saying an unconscious man was found in Grenfell Park. Paramedics arrived to provide emergency treatment to Trickett, but he was pronounced dead at the scene. Local police officers labelled the incident as an unexplained death, adding a post-mortem will be carried out in due course. The deceased was one of the three men charged last week with agreeing to take part in information gathering, surveillance and acts of deception that were likely to assist the Hong Kong intelligence service. The other two are Peter Wei and Yun chong Biu. Yun is the office manager of the Hong Kong Economic and Trade Office in London. The trio appeared in court on Monday and were granted bail until Friday for another hearing. That's despite the prosecution's request to not grant bail to Trickett because of his attempt to commit suicide after being charged by the authorities. In a statement, Trickett's family said they hope the public can leave them with some privacy. Trickett's lawyer said he was shocked by the news. 37-year-old Trickett has served in the Royal Marines for six years and was a home office immigration officer when he died. Reportedly, he was also the director of a private security consultancy firm. In Beijing, the Foreign Affairs Ministry urged the UK to stop political manipulations against China. We firmly oppose smearing China under the name of so-called espionage activities. In Hong Kong, when asked about Trickett's death today, Financial Secretary Paul Chen declined to make any comment. And the Commerce and Economic Development Bureau reiterated the roles of the economic and trade officers. To liaise with the local government, think tank, and also the um, uh, different sectors, uh, well, basically different sectors in all walks of life, to uh, try to improve or facilitate or foster collaboration on trade and investment. Lawmaker Lai Tong Kwok, who is formerly the city's secretary for security, said the British government should give an update on Trickett's death as soon as possible. Mims Nye, TVB News. The Immigration Department arrested 15 mainland residents suspected of doing illegal cleaning work as authorities continue their crackdown on illegal workers in the city. They received payments of $50 to $80 per hour, with some of them having overstayed in the city for six and a half years. Immigration officers arrested the illegal workers on Reclamation Street in Mong Kok, where they were suspected to have shared a 500-square-foot apartment. The 15 suspects are aged between 28 and 61. Four of them entered Hong Kong illegally. Authorities seized a number of mobile phones and 17 suspected forged identity cards. The Immigration Department said it will continue its investigation to determine whether the illegal workers are working under a larger organization. The chairman of the Legislative Council's Panel on Environmental Affairs said the government is unlikely to implement the waste charging scheme in August. Edward Lau Kwok Fun's comment said issues arose from the waste charging demonstration scheme introduced in April. Mimo Singai reports. The government's waste charging demonstration scheme was launched at 14 designated sites almost two months ago. Members of the public have raised concerns on multiple issues that popped up during the trial. The government's plan was to implement the waste charging scheme on August 1st. Lawmaker Edward Lau, chairman of the LESCO's Environmental Affairs Panel, said the chances of the government implementing the scheme in August is low. He said the trial run showed that many residents still do not have a sufficient understanding of the waste charging concept, while recycling facilities in the city remain inadequate. 
Lao said chaos and resentment could be created should the government force the scheme on the public in August. He said authorities should find a more mature time to introduce the measure. However, environmental group The Green Earth said the scheme should not be delayed any longer. Executive Director Edwin Lau said the government should guide the public in making use of the scheme. He had the authorities should present the public with a time frame on the installment of recycling facilities in the city. Mims 9, TVB News. The government is planning to make it mandatory for locally trained dentists to work in the public health system for one year as interns. The government revealed that some dental students lacked actual experience to perform certain procedures. The government had earlier proposed at the Legislative Council that dental students should work in public organizations such as the Department of Health or the Hospital Authority as interns for a year before they can register as dentists. But some lawmakers and dental students said the plan has no urgency. In a report released yesterday, authorities noted a number of issues related to the training of local dentists. David Lamb, the lawmaker for the Medical and Health Services, said he had been unaware of the report and the Faculty of Dentistry at the University of Hong Kong should now provide an explanation. The Vatican would like to establish a permanent office in China in what would be a major upgrade of diplomatic relations with Beijing. Relations between the Vatican and China have historically been fraught the Vatican admitting the church had made errors over the centuries in their zeal to convert the Chinese faithful. But Pope Francis has made it a priority to normalize relations. Tracy Furness has more. Here, Shanghai Bishop Joseph Sambin is seen alongside the Vatican Secretary of State, Cardinal Pietro Parolin. A noteworthy moment, as it is the first time in memory that a mainline bishop has been allowed by Beijing to participate in a public Vatican event as the keynote speaker. It was also significant given the controversy over Shen's 2023 appointment. Pope Francis was forced to recognize China's There's unilateral no appointment of Shen as Bishop of Shanghai, which violated the Holy See's 2018 accord with Beijing over bishop appointments. The Vatican hosted the head of China's bishops in an unprecedented conference commemorating a landmark 1924 meeting in Shanghai that affirmed the need for foreign missionaries to give way to local church leaders in China. Pope Francis said they, participants to the first Chinese Catholic Synod, were almost all from distant countries, and before the Council, many of them were not ready to consider the opportunity to entrust the leadership of the dioceses to priests and bishops born in China. Then the Council embarked on a true synodal journey and signed all the provisions that open new paths so that the Church, even in China, Catholic China, could increasingly have a Chinese face. Beijing has been following a policy of sinicization of religion, trying to root out foreign influences. There are an estimated 10 to 12 million Catholics in China. Tracy Furness, TVB News. Welcome back. Spain, Ireland and Norway said today they would recognize the Palestinian state on May 28th, a step towards a long-held Palestinian aspiration for a country of their own. It comes amid international outrage over the civilian death toll and humanitarian crisis in the Gaza Strip as a result of Israel's offensive. The triple announcement may trigger other EU countries to do the same and deepen Israel's isolation. Some 140 of 190 countries represented in the UN have already recognized a Palestinian state. Nasvi Karim with more. Irish Prime Minister Simon Harris channeled Ireland's own 1919 plea for independence as he announced his country's recognition of Palestine. Last month I stood on these same steps with Prime Minister Sanchez of Spain and we said that the point of recognizing the state of Palestine was coming closer. That point has now arrived. Today, Ireland, Norway and Spain are announcing that we recognise the state of Palestine. I'm confident that further countries will join us 
in taking this important step in the coming weeks. In a coordinated series of announcements, Spanish leader Pedro Sánchez informed his parliament that Spain would recognize Palestine on May 28th, to rousing applause. Norway's Prime Minister, Yunos Garstura, the first to make the announcement, said the decision is aimed at eventually creating lasting peace via a two-state solution. The United States and most countries around the world back a two-state solution for the Middle East, with the Palestinian state existing side by side with Israel along pre-1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his hardline allies reject the notion of a Palestinian state. Before Spain's announcement, Israel ordered immediate recall of its ambassadors to Ireland and Norway. Its foreign ministry said the three countries' decision to recognize a Palestinian state would lead to more terrorism, instability in the region and jeopardize any prospects for peace. This as Israeli warplanes pounded areas in northern and southern Gaza. In the south, three children were killed in Khan Yunus and five died in Rafah, including three children. Israel is also targeting the Kamal Adwan and al Auda hospitals near Jabalia as they fight Hamas units that have regrouped in the north. World Health Organization Director General Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus said in Geneva the al Auda hospital near Adwan is under siege. Meanwhile, a news agency, the Associated Press, has hit out at Israel after some of its cameras and broadcasting equipment were seized by officials. Israel accused AP of violating a new media law by providing a fee to ban Qatar-based news channel Al Jazeera. The Israelis say they will return the equipment after pressure from the U.S. Nazvi Karim, TVB News. The Office of the Privacy Commissioner ordered cryptocurrency WorldCoin to cease its operations in the city after it was found to have breached several parts of the personal data ordinance. The cryptocurrency project was founded by OpenAI CEO Sam Altman in 2020, with at least 8,300 residents having already signed up for its digital passport. This, as the Office of the Privacy Commissioner noted the project's requirement for users to have their faces and eyes scanned for verification, breached privacy rules. According to the Personal Data Ordinance, offenders of the PCPD's execution notices are liable to a maximum fine of $50,000 and two years imprisonment. The Independent Commission Against Corruption signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime and multiple overseas anti-corruption authorities at the 8th ICAC Symposium today. The purpose of the collaboration is to enhance international efforts to clamp down on corruption. Despite your wide-ranging backgrounds, your goal is shared. How best to prevent and combat corruption under the unique one country, two systems principle, Hong Kong maintains a robust regulatory regime in line with international standards and is renowned globally for its clean and efficient government. We are also at the forefront of the international fight against corruption. The symposium, organized by the ICAC and International Association of Anti-Corruption Authorities, was attended by more than 500 professionals from 60 jurisdictions. The International or the Hong Kong International Dragon Boat Races will take place in the city from June 15th to 16th at the Chim Sa Chu Promenade. Promenade. The Hong Kong Tourism Board will also arrange separate performances, such as drone shows on the sidelines of the event, to enhance the visitor experience. Timothy Lee tells us more. One of the city's most exciting sporting events will take place next month at Victoria Harbor. This year's international dragon boat races will include more than 170 teams and 4,000 athletes from all over the world. Nations such as Thailand and the Philippines will also send their national teams to compete in the sport originating from ancient China. Jointly organized by the Hong Kong Tourism Board and the Hong Kong China Dragon Boat Association, the former held the spread of the dragon boat culture across the globe over the past five decades. Uh, the Hong Kong International Dragon Boat Race is one of the oldest international events in Hong Kong. And in two years' time, it will be 50 years. Uh, over the last many decades, this dragon boat 
uh, sports actually has become more popular, not only in the region, but actually around the world as part of the team building exercise. Visitors can watch the races along the Chimsha Chui Promenade. The viewing zone is situated along a stretch of the promenade starting outside the Kowloon Shangri-La to the Bruce Lee statue on the Avenue of Stars. Similar to previous years, this year's Dragon Boat races are also recognized as an M-Mark event by the Major Sports Events Committee and is said to cost $17 million. Organizers aim to drum up excitement for the Hong Kong International Dragon Boat Races by staging festival-themed drone shows and pyrotechnic displays on designated days of the event. This year's Dragon Boat Races will also mark the first time food and beverage stalls will be featured on site. Timothy Lee, TVB News. That's the news. Thanks for watching. Have a good evening.